Welcome back to Dan Recaps. Today, I'm going to explain the movie, I Am Mortal, released in the year 2021. The year is 2235, and humans have achieved immortality and are now living in the futuristic city of Alessandre. The narrator of our story, Logos, explains how after multiple disasters, a scientist has created a perfect world for humans. Logo's life is about to change as he will soon be receiving the gift of immortality and will thereafter be frozen in time. Although the idea seems amazing at first glance, there are consequences, including the loss of freedom, which causes Logos to consider whether or not it is worth it. In Alessandre, the scientist pilot who is the mastermind behind this idea addresses a crowd promising that he will give them eternal life with no suffering from any kind of physical or emotional distress. Although a part of this seemingly balanced society, Logos is lonely and feels that no one else has the same feelings or emotions as he does and wonders if there are other people who question this existence the same way that he does. Logos is then approached by a girl named Sunita who gives him a device to communicate and promises to answer all his questions before quickly disappearing into the crowd so no one will know about this interaction. Despite her efforts, the scene is captured by security cameras monitored by Amaros who becomes suspicious of their behavior. Amaros contacts Akei, a guard in training, and takes her to meet Pilot to discuss Logos meeting with Sunita. At Logos and Sunita's next meeting, Akei attempts to spy on them but can't find any information from their conversation. At her report, Amaros informs Pilot of the findings and he orders him to continue following them. After the call, Amaros tells Akei that Pilot is concerned because his ex-partner, Helios, went rogue and stole a virus that can alter the code that he is using to reprogram the human genome and make people immortal. Although Helios was rehabilitated and his mind wiped clean, Pilot still fears his ideas might have spread and Sunita might be one of those followers. Akei then meets Logos to try and get an idea of his feelings towards the pilot's vision, but when Logos asks if she really believes in it, she leaves the conversation in confusion. After Logos meets Sunita again, she takes him to a church they are using as a hideout and introduces him to Masim, who explains they are trying to alert people that their thinking abilities are compromised after taking Pilot's pills. Realizing that Logos seems immune to maintenance, Masim invites him to join the group. Masim then gives Logos a tour of the lab, where he reveals they are preparing an antidote under the supervision of an expert, Midorin. The team also includes a historian, Arcade, who tells them about how Helios worked with Pilot in developing the code. But once their invention was implemented, Helios became suspicious of Pilot's agenda and parted ways with him. Before having his mind wiped, Helios stored his memory of his mortal existence in his data center. The group reveals they are planning to reduce the potency of maintenance, the pill that Pilot makes everyone take so people will be able to think again and experience human existence in its true form. Meanwhile, Pilot talks to his artificial assistant Amanda about how Helios believed every mortal individual had a soul and was sent to Earth for a purpose. While Pilot thought the human body was just a machine that can be redesigned to live forever, the next day, Logos has a short interaction with Akei where she asks whether he takes the maintenance, but he refuses to answer. Later, in his meeting with Masim and the group, Sunita tells him they want to infiltrate the maintenance supply facility, but have found it is impossible without help from the inside. Logos thinks Akei might be the person to help and meets her at her workplace to continue their conversation about taking maintenance. But it is cut short due to an interruption from her colleagues, Surya and her twin sister. Amaros later calls Akei to ask the reason behind Logos' visit, but she assures him he only wanted to know if she takes maintenance too or not. Akei then asks Amaros if he has ever thought about what it feels like to not be on maintenance and to experience the mind in his uncontrolled state, but he reveals he is content with his life and believes questioning Pilot's agenda would be a disrespect to his service. On seeing Akei again, Logos takes her to the group where they meet Gergut, a chef who improvises maintenance intake to make it taste better. 
Masim also welcomes Akei into the facility and explains Helios's concept that humans were born to die. He proposed that every individual has an essence, a soul created by God, but Pilot disagreed and started determining the purpose for every citizen himself, hence denying them their destiny. Midoran then shows them a device called the Code Diffuser, which is capable of wiping out Pilot's code from the genome to restore mortality. The device originally belonged to Helios, but it is just a prototype as he could not finish working on it. But the group is planning to find and restore Helios's mind data. Akei thinks people won't want to use the diffuser as they believe immortality is a gift, but Midoran reveals it's because the maintenance does not allow them to think clearly. Knowing its effect, they are planning to alter a batch of maintenance so people can understand their message fully. But first, they require Akei's help in accessing the facility. Meanwhile, Amanda, who is revealed to be a replacement for Pilot's deceased daughter, asks him how he felt after losing her. Pilot says the pain of losing her was overwhelming for him as he had already lost his wife and it became the driving force behind his research. Akei meets Amaros and tells him the group's plan to convince everyone to become mortal. Amaros responds that the group is full of the defective ones who want to disrupt their perfect and well-balanced society for no reason. However, he allows her to proceed and Akei leads the group to the underground tunnels to infiltrate the building, but after ending up at a locked door, they are forced to retreat. On their way back, they come across Amaros who takes Logos away with him. Back at the lab, Pilot congratulates Akei on her good work as they erase Logos' memories. Akei is concerned about Logos and questions Pilot about his whereabouts so she can apologize for deceiving him. But Pilot reveals the Logos she used to know is gone now because they have already rehabilitated him and released him from his desire for mortality. Upset by the situation, Akei decides to skip a dose of her maintenance so she can find out for herself if Logos and the group were right. After getting the information from her colleagues, Akei visits a medical facility where Logos is trying to adjust to his new life. Overwhelmed to see him again, she kisses him and tries to apologize for what she did, but finds he doesn't remember her. Distressed, she tries to approach the group to inform them what happened to him, but they are not willing to trust her. However, she doesn't give up and visits the church to tell Masim she too is skipping her dose and now realizes that Pilot is indirectly controlling their minds. The group then busts Logo Sound to restore him while also removing his data from the server. After saving Logos, the group decides to hack into Pilot's next speech to the citizens and replace it with their own feed so they can spread the truth. But no, it's only possible after altering the maintenance supply. So with the help of Surya and her sister, the group sneak into the facility where Gergut is abducted by Amaros and interrogated about the group. Entering the supply room, the group successfully alters the next batch with the help of Midoran's antidote. They escape and set up camp outside the city, but everyone is worried about Gergut, who is still missing. While trying to comfort Midoran, Logo spots the code diffuser and comes up with a plan to use it on himself. Soon, Masim joins the camp with news that the altered dose of maintenance is being distributed and will start working tomorrow. As everyone will finally be free from its effect, they can deliver their message, but only have one chance to get it right as their identities will be exposed. While discussing the situation, Logos asks if the code diffuser will work on him. Midoran thinks it is impossible without first accessing Helios' mind data, but Logos decides to try it on himself anyway to become immortal. This decision upsets Akei but Logos convinces her that he wants to experience life in its true essence where he has to make the most of the limited time he has. When Logos uses the diffuser on himself, he passes out. On examining him, Midoran reveals his body is in shock and might need a few days to stabilize. He eventually wakes up as Akei tells him that she is happy with his decision to become mortal again and confesses to having feelings for him. The next day, the team sets their plan into action. They hack Pilot's address and Logos tells the citizens he has freed himself from Pilot's control after turning into a mortal being again. 
Meanwhile, Amanda asks Pilot if he is content with reprogramming people. He defends his decision saying he has done a great service to the human race by eradicating their suffering, not just physical, but also free them from the suffering of losing their loved ones. As Akei urges people to free themselves from Pilot's hold, Amaros panics, but Pilot is surprisingly calm, assuring him that everything will return to normal soon. Curious about his behavior, Amanda questions him and Pilot discloses the diffuser is just a prototype that cannot work without Helios' mind data, which only he knows about. Then, Akei also uses the diffuser on herself and kisses Logos in front of everyone. A confused Pilot looks around to see Amanda has escaped. The movie ends as Akei explains how Amanda downloaded Helios' data and now holds the key to restoring the human race, but the problem is they still need to find her. That was all from the video. Subscribe for more content like this and leave us a like to help the channel out. Also, leave a comment if you want us to recap your favorite movie. Take care!